Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on animal classification. Today's objectives will be, number one, what are the common characteristics that all animals share? Number two, describe the two major groups that scientists use to classify animals. And then number three, how do animals get their food? Let's start with common characteristics that all animals share. Uh, there's many different types of animals and they all can live in different areas, but they also have different, uh, the similar characteristics. The first characteristic is that they are all multicellular. What does that mean? They are made up of many cells. And groups of cells can come together as tissue and they can have their own function. And groups of tissues can come together and make organs and groups of organs can come together finally to make a complete organism. Another characteristic that all animals share are they, they, they are all heterotrophic. What does that mean? Let's break down that word. Hetero means that they, uh, uh, they make, they cannot make their own food, excuse me, they can't make their food. and they must get it from an outside source. Another characteristic of all animals is that they're made up of eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are cells that contain a nucleus and they have the membrane bound organelles or structures that uh, have specialized functions uh, that help the cell to work and do its job. Uh, all animals, they reproduce sexually, and that's how they pass on their genes to the next generation. And symmetry, all animals show some type of symmetry, and symmetry is just a word that means, uh, or describes the arrangement of the body, what it looks like, and we'll talk more about that later on in the, les on the lesson. And all animals are motile, which means that they all show some type of movement at some point in their lives. All right, let's talk now about how animals are classified. If you are a scientist and you found a new species of animal, what are some questions that you might have in your mind before you could tell others what type of animal it was? Well. Uh, one thing that all scientists must do is they must ask themselves, does this animal have a backbone? And that's because all animals are organized according to where, whether they are invertebrates or vertebrates. And invertebrates have no backbone. Whereas vertebrates have a backbone. So humans are animals and we have a backbone. So we would be considered a vertebrate organism. Another question that uh, scientists may ask is, what is this animal's symmetry? What is their arrangement of their body? Uh, another question would be, what does the animal eat for food? That's very important. And then they also may ask, what other organisms does, uh, has similar characteristics to this organism? So all of those questions are important when you're trying to classify animals. Uh, let's go into more detail about animal classification and why it's important. There's almost two million species of animals that have been identified and named. However, we have so many more animals that we have yet to uh, find out about and identify a name. Uh, so some uh, scientists claim that there's like close to 30 million more species of animals that still need to be identified. It's a possibility. So um, it's important that you understand how animals are classified. Now the type of uh, science that actually studies animals is called zoology. And so a zoologist would be a scientist who studies uh, animals. Zoologists 
can work in zoos. Um, that's where they get that word zoo from. And they can work in all different fields um, of science, um, but their main study is the study of animals in their environment. All animals, again, are classified into two major groups, the invertebrates and the vertebrates. 